What's a perfectly productive day in the life of Jeff Bezos? You're one of the most productive humans in the world. Well, I first of all, I get up in the morning and I putter. I like I like have a coffee. Can you define I, putter? Just like I slowly <laughs> move around. I'm not as productive as you might think I am. I mean, I because I do believe in wandering, and I sort of I, I you know I read my phone for a while. I read newspapers for a while. I chat. Uh, with Laura and I drink my first coffee. Um, so I kind of, I move pretty slowly in the first couple of hours. I get up early, just naturally. Uh, and uh, and then, you know, I exercise most days. And uh, most days it's not that hard for me. Some days it's really hard and I do it anyway. I don't want to, you know, and it's painful. And I'm like, why am I here? And <laughs> I don't want to do it. Why am I here at the gym? Why, why am I here at the gym? Why don't yeah. I do something else? You know, this it's not always easy. Uh, What's your source you know, of motivation in those moments? I know that I'll feel better later if I do it, and so like the the real source of motivation. I can tell the days when I skip it. Mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not quite as alert. I don't feel as good. Um, and then there's harder motivations. It's longer term. You want to be healthy as you age. You know, you want health span. You want. Ideally, you know, you want to be healthy and moving around when you're 80 years old, you know, and so there's a lot of, but that kind of motivation is so far in the future, it can be very hard to work in the second. Yeah. So thinking about the fact, I'll feel better in about four hours if I do it now, I'll have more energy for the rest of my day and so on and so on. What's your exercise routine just to linger on that? What do you, how much you curl? I mean, what are we talking about here? <laughs> <laughs> That's all I do at the gym. So I just <laughs> I, I I my my routine. Um, you know, on a good day, I do about half an hour of cardio, and I do about forty five minutes of weightlifting, resistance training of some kind, mostly weights. I have a trainer who you know I love, um, who pushes me, um, which is really helpful. You know, he'll be, I'll be like, uh, he'll say, uh, Jeff, do you think you could? can we go up on that weight a little bit? And I'll think about it and I'll be like, no, I don't think so. And he'll be, he'll look at me and say, yeah, I think you can. <laughs> 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 and of course he's right. Yeah, of course. And so it's of course. helpful to have somebody push you a little bit. But almost every day you do that. I, I do almost every day. I do a little bit of cardio and a little bit of weightlifting, and um, I'd rotate. I'd do a pulling day and a pushing day and a leg day. It's all pretty standard stuff. So puttering, coffee, gym. Puttering, coffee, gym, and then work. Work. So what's work look like? What 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 are the productive uh, hours look like for you? I you know so I a couple of years ago I left as the CEO of Amazon, I and I have never worked harder in my life. <laughs> so I'm like, I am, I am working so hard, and I'm mostly enjoying it. But there are also some very painful days. Uh, most of my time is spent on um, Blue Origin, and I've been I'm so deeply involved here now for the last couple of years. And in the big, I love it. In the small, there's all the frustrations that come along with everything. You know, we're trying to get to rate manufacturing, as we talked about. That's super important. We'll get there. We just hired a new CEO, a guy I've known for close to 15 years now, a guy named Dave Limp, who I love, he's amazing, you know, um, so we're super lucky to have Dave, and, you know, we're gonna, you're, you're gonna see us move faster there. But so, uh, my day of work, you know, reading documents, having meetings, um, sometimes in person, sometimes over Zoom, depends on where I am. It's all about, you know, the technology, it's about the organization, it's about, you know, I'm very, um, I, f I have architecture and technology meetings almost every day on various subsystems inside the vehicle, mm -hmm. inside the engines. It's super fun for me. My favorite part of it is the technology. Mm -hmm. um, my least favorite part of it is, you know, building organizations and so on. That's important, but it's also my least favorite part. So, you know, that's why they call it work. You don't always get to do what you want to do. How do you achieve time where you can focus and truly think through problems i do little thinking retreats so for uh, this is not the only i i can do that all day long i'm very good at focusing i'm very good at um you know i'm i don't 
keep to a strict schedule. Like my meetings often go longer than I plan for them to because I believe in wandering. I lo- my perfect meeting starts with a crisp document. So the document should be written with such clarity that it's like angels singing from on high. I like a crisp document and a messy meeting. And so the meeting is about like asking questions that nobody knows the answer to and, 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 and trying to like wander your way to a solution. And, um, uh, cause like, and, and that is, if when that happens just right, it makes all the other meetings worthwhile. It feels good. It has, it has a kind of beauty to it. It has an aesthetic beauty to it. And, and you get real breakthroughs in meetings like that. Can you actually describe the, the crisp document? Like this is one of the legendary aspects of Amazon uh, of the way you approach meetings. Is this the six page memo? Maybe first describe the process of, of running yeah. a meeting with memos and meetings at Amazon and at Blue Origin are unusual. When we when we get new when new people come in, like a new executive joins, they're a little taken aback sometimes because the typical meeting will start with a six page narratively structured memo, mm-hmm. and we do study hall for thirty minutes. We sit there silently together in the meeting and read. I love Take this. notes in the margins. And then we then we discuss. And the reason, by the way, we do study, you could say, I would like everybody to read these memos in advance. But the problem is people don't have time to do that. Mm-hmm. And they end up coming to the meeting having only skimmed the memo or maybe not read it at all. And they're trying to catch up. And they're also bluffing like they were in college having pretended to do the reading. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> it's better just to carve out yeah. the time for people. And do it so now together. we're all on the same page. We've all read the memo. And now we can have a really elevated discussion. And this is so much better from having a slideshow presentation, you know, a PowerPoint presentation of some kind where there, that has so many difficulties. But one of the problems is PowerPoint is really designed to persuade. It's kind of a sales tool. And internally, the last thing you want to do is sell. You want to, you're, again, you're truth seeking. You're trying to find truth. And the other problem with PowerPoint is it's easy for the author and hard for the audience. Mm-hmm. And a memo is the opposite. It's hard to write a six page memo. A good six page memo might take two weeks to write. Mm-hmm. You have to write it, you have to rewrite it, you have to edit it, you have to talk to people about it, they have to poke holes in it for you. You write it again. It might take two weeks. So the author, it's really a very difficult job. But for the audience, it's much better. So you can read a half hour and, you know, there are little problems with PowerPoint presentations too. You know, senior executives interrupt with questions halfway through the presentation. That question's going to be answered on the next slide, but you never got there. Whereas if you read the whole memo in advance, you, you know, I often write lots of questions that I have in the margins of these memos. And then I go cross them all out because by the time I get to the end of the memo, they've been answered. answered That's why yeah. I save all that time. You also get, you know, if the person who's preparing the memo, we talked earlier about, um, you know, group think and, you know, the fact that I go last in meetings and that you don't want, you know, to your ideas to kind of pollute the meeting prematurely. Um, you know, the author of the memo is, is, has, has kind of got to be very vulnerable. They've got to put all their thoughts out yeah. there and they've got to go first. But that's great because it, makes them really good. And so, and you get to see their real ideas and you're not trampling on them accidentally in a big, you know, PowerPoint presentation. What's that feel like when you've authored a thing and then you're sitting there and everybody's reading your thing? You're like- I think it's mostly terrifying. Yeah. (laughs) Like maybe in a good way? I think it's- Like a purifying? I think it's terrifying in in a productive way. Yeah. Um, but I, I think it's emotionally a very nerve wracking experience. Is there a art science to the writing of the six page memo or just writing in general to you? The, I mean, it's really got to be a real memo. So it means, you know, paragraphs have topic sentences, like it's verbs and nouns. You can't, that's the other problem with PowerPoint press. They're often just bullet points mm-hmm. and you can, uh, you can hide a lot of sloppy thinking behind bullet points. When you have to write in complete sentences with narrative structure, it's really hard to hide sloppy thinking. So it does it it forces the author to be at their best. 
And so you're getting somebody's, they're getting somebody's really their best thinking. And then you don't have to spend a lot of time trying to tease that thinking out of the person. You've got it from the very beginning. So it really saves you time in the long run. Uh, so that part is crisp and then the rest is messy. Crisp document. Yes, and you me. don't want, you don't want to pretend that the discussion should be crisp. Yeah. There's, you know, most meetings you're trying to solve a really hard problem. There's a different kind of meeting, which we call weekly business reviews or business reviews. They may be weekly or monthly or daily, whatever they are. But these business review meetings, that's usually for incremental improvement. And you're look, looking at a series of metrics. Every time it's the same metrics. Those meetings can be very efficient. They can start on time and end on time. 